hello and welcome to episode two of Craig vs Games. Um, game one didn't go my way and I find myself behind. However, I'm hopeful that in game two we can pick up a victory. Uh, for those of you who are rooting for me to do well, this is our chance to pull level. And, uh, but I don't want to be a scaremonger. Uh, if we don't take this opportunity to pull level, we may not get another opportunity to pull level for quite some time. Uh, so here we go. This is today we're going to be playing. Imperial Settlers Empires of the North, which is one of the worst names for a game ever invented. Um, I mean, A, it's just way too long. Two, it's just got words in it that kind of don't really mean anything. And C, it's got Imperial Settlers in really tiny writing up here because it's a follow-up to a game called Imperial Settlers, which nobody's ever heard of other than gamers, so it doesn't mean anything. So for the duration of this video, I'll be referring to this game as Empires of the North because that flows off the tongue a little bit more. Uh, for those of you paying attention, you might have noticed that the list of things that I just went through went from A to 2 to C, and that wasn't intentional. Uh, that was a joke that hopefully one or two people, one or two specific people will understand that joke and have found it funny because if they did, then this video is worthwhile. Uh, so moving on to this game, this game is normally competitive. So. If you've played board games at all, most of the games you will have played are where you're trying to beat your opponents at the table, and this is how this game normally works. You're playing with multiple people, and you're trying to score more points than they do. However, it also comes with some solo scenarios where you play against the game, and that's one of, I'm going to do one of the solo scenarios today, and I'll explain a little bit more what that means as we understand the rules and how the game works. Uh, the game itself is... Well, the theme is that you are a clan of people trying to build your empire, essentially to score points. Um, the mechanics of the game, and for any of you non-gamers out there, just hold on to your hats because I'm going to use some sexy game nerd words. It's a tableau building resource management game. Uh, if you don't know what any of that means, don't worry about it, you don't need to. Uh, and as a general rule of thumb, if you meet anybody in the street and they use the word tableau, they're probably a gamer. Um, well, those words mean will become apparent. And even if they don't, it doesn't matter, you'll understand what's going on. Um, the clever bit about this game is that each player, when you play multiplayer, is given a unique clan, a unique deck of cards that have uh, actions on them and interact with each other in different ways so that every time you play you can have a different clan and you will play the game slightly differently. Um, I am going to play a solo scenario with this clan, uh, which I forget the name of, but the name is the least important thing about this clan. For anybody who cares, it's one of the Inuit clans and it is the one that likes to burn through fields, discard cards for points. Um, and I'm going to try and beat the game. One thing I wanted to mention was that the solo scenarios that come in this game, I have played all four of them with all eight of the clans and didn't really come close to losing. So I thought that, that really wasn't much of a challenge and that shouldn't be included in this series of games. However, uh, given the current circumstances in the world, the publisher of this game uh, have recently released three free solo scenarios on their website just as a PDF. Uh, and I downloaded them and I played one of them the other day and it crushed me. However, mistakes were made and I feel like I've learned from that lesson and we're playing with a different clan and now I know understand the intricacies of the solo scenario, I hopefully will do a bit better this time and that's the scenario we're going to play it against. So, let's get to the table. Okay, I have set up the game and ready to play. Uh, out here I've got my starting fields and these fields generate these starting resources uh, and also I've got five workers to start the game. Uh, here we have the score track, here up here we have the action wheel and the islands, the nearby and the distant islands, I'll explain all of this as we go through the game. Um, but what is different about this scenario specifically is these two here. So the, the scenario uh, when you print it out has got two spaces that you put items. I've not printed it out because I haven't got a printer, so I've just got it on the screen. So in place of the two locations, I've used these tiles. Uh, this red one is the wall. 
and this yellow one is where the frost giants are going to go uh, and I'll explain a little bit more about the scenario specific stuff as we go through it um, I might not use the word specific much because I know of at least one person who can't pronounce the word specific and that might upset them so I'll just say that this for this scenario these are the special rules um, we're going to try and score points that is the idea of winning this game so when you play solo uh, you play for four rounds so the, the hard limit is four rounds I'll explain what a round is as we go through uh, and in the scenario you're trying to get to a limit so in this scenario the limit of points that we're trying to achieve is 45 for the victory uh, that seems like a long way away because we're currently have got zero and I'll tell you that how we score points so through the course of the four rounds we're going to be taking actions that score us points and then also at the end of the fourth round <clears throat> we're going to score additional points for every card that we've got in our empire uh, currently we've got three in our stock if we have any gold then each of those is worth a point and then we're going to count up how many other goods we've got in our stock we're going to divide that by two and round down and i'm going to score that many points and then in this scenario specifically on the wall every rock is going to be worth three points and every worker is going to be worth two points so having things on the wall is a good thing uh, so let's just start the game and see how we do so before the game even starts what we need to do is draw five cards and from these five cards we are going to choose three to keep and two to discard uh, and i'm not going to go through every card and what it all does because that would be highly tedious even for me uh, so just bear with me and i will pick the three cards that i want to keep for now so that was just initial setup so now we're going to start the first round proper so the start of the each round is the lookout phase, which is where you're going to draw four more cards. And you are allowed to keep as many of these cards as you want to. However, to keep each one, you're going to spend a worker. So for every card that I want to keep, I have to spend a worker. So uh, let's just talk about spending resources. So normally when I spend resources, they go away. They go back to the supply. It's different for workers. So I've got five workers and to spend them, I'm just going to put them on this tile, which means I can't then spend them for the rest of this round. But then at the end of the round, they're all going to come back. So I don't lose workers, but I spend them by putting them onto this tile. And it's also possible to assign them to a task so that they're not available in the next round. And if that happens, I'll show you what I'm doing. And I'm going to want to keep that one. And I don't want to keep that one. And I will not keep that one. Um, yeah, so we're going to keep two cards. Okay, so I've got a hand of cards now. After the lookout phase, we do in the solo game, you do the event phase. So, uh, one of the things that the solo scenario throws at you is random events that you either have to deal with or plan for and mitigate. So, in this specific scenario, which is different to other ones, uh, there are two events. So the way that I choose events is I'm going to roll this die. So the first one's a one, and this scenario says I have to spend a rock or remove a worker from the wall. So I've got a rock to spend, so I'm going to spend a rock. So that was the first event, and then the second event says a two, is I may spend two rocks or wood in any combination to place a rock on the wall. And then I also have to assign a worker from the general supply to the frost giants. So I'm going to assign a worker to the frost giants. And I may spend a combination of rock and wood to put a rock on the wall. I don't want to do that for now. So one, this scenario, <coughs> I didn't mention it at the start, but it also has, unusually, an automatic loss um, rule. Which is, if there are no rock on the wall ever, then I lose the game and I don't get to count up my points. So I want to keep rocks on the wall, but I don't want to spend my resources to put another rock on there right now, and I'll explain why. Okay, so that was the lookout phase. Uh, I will then 
go through my actions. So once you've done the workouts, you then move on to your actions. And I'm allowed to do as many actions as I want. Uh, or more correctly, as many actions as I can. Um, one of the actions that I can do is uh, play a card from my hand. So you will notice in the top left that this card tells me that in order to build it, I have to spend a rock. So I'm going to play it to the table and spend a rock. Uh, and remember, the cards on the table in my empire at the end of the game are worth a point. So that would have just earned myself a point. Another action that I can take is uh, to for any of these buildings that so any of these buildings that I any of these cards that I play sorry uh, using terminology that's game specific that you don't know about but any cards that I play that say on them action I'm allowed to take that action so this one says spend a fish to gain a point so I can trigger that card so you have to rotate the card to show that you've used it because you can only use each card once and I'm going to score a point by spending a fish well there you go we're off the mark racing away I am going to then one of the other actions that you can do on your turn is use these little chunky wooden discs on the action wheel so there are five available actions all you do is place your disc next to the action you want to take and choose in harvest and then you get to do that thing however before I do that thing I'm also going to show you this card this in the top left it doesn't show you any resources to build it it says harvest to build which means that when i take the harvest action i'm allowed it to build this card this card is a field so it's going to get played there and as soon as you play a field you get the resource that's printed on it which is food and then also i put the harvest action i haven't yet done that the harvest action says gain resources from one of your fields so i can get more things and I want some fish uh, because I've got a way of spending fish to score points so why not uh, let me let me think about what else I want to do I am going to harvest again no I'm not I lied Instead of harvesting, what I'm going to do is construct. So one of the actions here is construct, which is instead of paying the cost for building the building, you just get to build it for free. So I'm going to build this building, which is not a building, it's a hungry eyeball fish, but we'll not worry about that too much. So I didn't have to pay two wood to do that. Uh, and then this then allows me to trigger the action on it. Oh, sorry, before I do that, this has got a building bonus of an axe. So I get an axe. This says the action is spend two workers to gain an axe. So I'm going to spend two workers. And I'm going to gain an axe. So now I've got two axes. Uh, and we don't know what axes do yet, I haven't told you, but we'll get there. Uh, and we're going to get there fairly quickly. Uh, I am going to... So once you've used these discs, they're in place. However, you can use them again. Uh, to do so, you have to spend the food. So I'm going to spend the food. And you can only do the items that are, sorry, the actions that are next to the one where it is. So if I wanted to use this disc, I could only populate or sail. And then if I was using this one, I can only explore or sail. I want to sail. Uh, so I'm going to, actually, it doesn't matter which one I use. So I'll do this. When you use your food and move it, you flip over the disc to show that you've used it twice because that's the limit of how many times you can do it. I'm going to sail uh, and, and my boats are going to go to the expedition board. Now, I have to decide right now. My, my boat's going away and it's going to do some things. I have to decide what is it that I want it to do. Do I want it to bring me back some stuff or do I want it to conquer an island? So let me just show you one of these cards. To show you what I mean. So here's what the island cards look like. On the left, under pillage, I could just get these things, which is two food and a point in this regard, in this scenario. However, the other option is instead of getting those things, I conquer this island and take this card, and this has now got 
an action for me to take in future and it also is a card that goes into my empire so it's going to be worth a point so I have to choose what do I want this book to do do I want to bring me back some stuff or I want do I want them to just conquer an island I also have another decision to make do I want them to go to an island that's close by or do I want them to go to an island that's a long way away uh, so these are the nearby islands and these are the distant islands and as you might suspect the distant islands are a little bit more sexy than the nearby islands and give you more exciting things however if I want them to go a far distance on their travels then I have to give them a fish so I'm going to give this boat a fish now I want them to conquer an island rather than just take some stuff from it then I have to give them an axe so I'm going to give them an axe and a fish because I plan on conquering a distant island and that might be my whole turn because the other cards that I've got in my hand I can't build right now so that's the end of round one I currently have one point we're doing well okay so we're gonna refresh here refresh all this in the solo this is in the solo game this is different from in the competitive game at the end of the round where your markers are get flipped over and all that, that means is the actions that you ended up on are now a bit more expensive to do in the next round. Okay, so I've done my actions. Then we move on to the expedition phase. So any boats that are on here are going to get um, resolved. In a multiplayer game, the order in which you put your ships on here would be the order that you resolve it. And whoever was there first gets to make their choice first. Because, and it's important because once you take an island or pillage an island, that island is no longer available for the others to do. However, in a solo game, it's obviously not as important because it's just me. So I'm going to take off my axe and my fish. I'll take my boat back. And I've got my eye on this island here. This island says spend a resource to gain two of that resource. So it's just going to increase my resource generating machine. It also says when you build it, you get a rock and about five feet. So I've got a rock and a food as well. Then all these cards are going to go away. So I just kept two cards. I'm going to spend those two things there. And then we move on to the events. So event three says you may spend a food or a fish to place a human on the wall and also Assign a human from the general supply to the frost, frost giants. So the frost giants have got a thing. Uh, now this is an important rule. Before we do anything, before we make a decision, the rule for the frost giants in the wall says if at any moment there are more workers on the frost giants than the combined number of things on the wall, then we remove all of the workers from the wall and remove our rock from the wall. Sorry, remove a rock and half of the workers, which in this scenario, in this situation, would actually be all of the workers. <clears throat> so, do I want to assign another worker to the wall? I might do. So, I'm going to spend a fish to assign a worker to the wall. So, that worker is now out of my supply, unfortunately, but I think it was the right thing to do. And then. A five says you may spend an axe to gain one point for every worker on the frost giants. So that would be worth two points. So a single axe for two points. I'm going to do it. I'm spending an axe. I'm going to score two points. Okay. So that was that. Now we're going to move to the action phase. Uh, I'm going to do this one first. Spend a resource to gain two of that resource. Which one do I want? Um, I suspect that. Let's go with fish. So I'm spending this fish and getting two back in return. Uh, I'm going to. So let's do that. Spend two of them to get an axe. I will then build this card for 
a rock uh, wood. I am going to uh, I am going to sail. So I need to spend the fish to sail because that's what it says here. I'm going to send it on a boat. I'm just going to send it with an axe. I don't, I don't need a fish. And then I'm going to spend this food to move this to construct and that construction will be this card here I am going to spend a fish to get a point up to four points and finally because I've got not a lot of resources left <coughs> I will Uh, explore. So, explore action, we haven't talked about that yet. Uh, the explore action is draw a card. I've also got this card which says explore to build and it is a rock field, an update, an upgrade to my rock field. So I get a rock and I draw a card. And I can spend, I can build this card that I've just drawn for a rock. Uh, and I will, because it cost me a rock, but the building bonus for it as a food. So I built a card and I got a food and I could if I wanted to spend that food and I will. I'm going to spend the food to move my action disk to populate. So this is the final action that we haven't talked about. Populate is quite simply get an extra worker and then also because I've got an extra worker now I can do this which is spend a worker to choose a field in my empire and return it to my hand. Uh, so that was that one. And I get a point for doing so when I spent that worker. I could have chosen to get a card, but instead I got a worker. Sorry, a point. Uh, that is the end of round two. So I'm going to do this. And flip these two back over. So now constructing and populating is more expensive. I'm going to reset all of these bad boys, put these back here. <clears throat> that is that. Uh, and then we're going to do the expedition. So I sent my ship with an axe because I wanted them to take this card here, which says I've got actually discarding a card to get an axe. And also, when you build it, you get a card. Sweet. And then all these go away. To, I'll keep that one. I just kept one card. Uh, so now, here we go. A two says, you may spend two rocks or wood, I haven't got any. So we're not worried about that. And then I have to sign a worker to the Frost Giants. So they've currently got three. And then, a two again. Uh, I think I'm reading the rules, it says you draw two numbers normally. So I'm just going to roll again so it's a different number. A six is not on the thing, and a five. I may spend an axe to score three points. I haven't got an axe to score three points, so we'll move on. Ignore that. That didn't happen. I definitely want to harvest for a number of reasons. I can play this. That gets me food. But I also need some resources. What resources do I need? I probably get fish. <clears throat> Okay, uh, I can spend two workers to get an axe. We know that axes are pretty useful. I can uh, discard a card to get an axe. Oh, I probably could have kept it. Um, I'm gonna get an axe. I can spend a resource to gain two of that resource. I will spend a fish and get an extra fish. I am going to have changed my mind. Instead of spending an extra fish, I'm going to spend the food and get an extra food. I'm going to sail by spending that food that I picked up. I'm doing this sail, sending this boat out here. Now I haven't looked at any of these. What do I want? I'm not 
not going to send them with anything. They just get him some stuff. So that was sailing. I should have played this when I did it. Sail to build. I guess some fish. I'm going to treat this. Spend a fish to get a point. I get a point. Uh, I'm going to trigger this. Spend the worker to choose a field in my empire and put it back in my hand for a point. I will choose this one. That's a point. But also I've got I've got that. Uh, I haven't got a rock to build it with though. Could harvest again to get some rocks. I will do. I'm gonna harvest, get two rocks. And then I'm gonna spend a rock to build this. So there's my rock. This doesn't do any, it's not got an action like this card, but it does get me two cards. stuff uh, and I might no, I want another axe I don't think I do right now so I'm going to keep my resources there spend the worker in a thing to explore or sail again I haven't got another boat but I can explore so I will do work on a fish done that I'm going to explore this allows me to play this. Discard up to three fields in my empire to skip two points for each. So I'm going to discard these two. And that is worth four points. Uh, I don't have any other cards to play or actions to take, I don't think. Uh, I could spend two resources to get an axe, but I think I've already got enough axes. So that's the end of my actions. I'm going to reset everything. I'm going to get my workers back and I'm going to take these. They were both on the sale, so the benefit of that is that only the sale action will be more expensive next time around. Uh, and then, we've so we've done all of that, we're now going to do this expeditions. And I, all I did was send workers, sorry, I didn't send them with any fish or any axes, so they're just going to pillage nearby islands. But pillaging this one gets me two food and a point. And then I could get two wood and a point. Uh, instead though, I'm just going to see what the top card is. So when you, whenever you interact with these islands, you can always just draw the top card. And that is a wood, a rock, and a point. So there's a point. There's a wood and a rock. So that was my two boats. These go away. final uh, events uh, and this is the last chance where we might have the scenario of losing things off the wall so hopefully that doesn't happen but let's see I've got a two that says I can spend two rocks or wood in a combination to place a rock on the wall and also I have to assign a worker to the frost giant so they're up to four I definitely don't want them to get more than I am so a rock on there is worth three points for me, so why don't I do it? I'm going to spend a rock and a wood, and that allows me to put a rock on the wall. Uh, so I should be safe from disaster one. It says spend one rock or remove one worker from the wall if possible. I'm just going to remove a worker from the wall because the way that I'm reading it, that's the last chance that there's. There's going to be any more things added to the frost giants, therefore those things that are on the wall are safe. However, that worker was worth two points. Oh, interesting. Very interesting. Do I want to spend a rock for two points? You know what? I'm not going to worry about it. Let's just move on. Okay. I'm going to spend a resource to gain two of that resource. What resource do I want? I could spend food. 
Uh, I could spend fishes, I think is what I want, because I might be doing some sailing. That's a good idea, because I've got the axes to spend. Okay. Uh, we're going to harvest. That allows me to build this food field, get another food, and I'm going to harvest the fishes, get two more fishes, and then going to spend the food to activate my work again. I have to spend fish to do so. I'm going to sail, I'm going to just send him with an axe just to capture one of these things for points because that's worth a point, so why not? <coughs> I am going to. Construct, so construct uh, that allows me to build this wood field and get a wood. And construction is this uh, field, which is the same as this one over here. So I'm just going to keep it together with it. Doesn't actually mean anything at the minute. I'm going to spend the food to explore, uh, which allows me to draw a card. And it also allows me to play this instant discard up to three fields to get two points each. So I'm going to discard those two, and I think I'm just going to discard that one as well, even though that's one of the starting cards, uh, to get six points. Six whole points, people. Six whole points. I am going to uh, spend a rock to build this card. I am going to spend a work on a fish to sail, work at a fish to sail with an axe to get more points. I am going to spend a fish to score a point. I'm up to 20. I'm feeling good about my chances. I'm going to spend a fish to score a point. Oh, hang on a second. Yes. Don't worry about it. Undo. That was undone because one of the actions that I haven't yet done is that at any number of times you can spend a food or a fish to assign a worker to the wall and uh, workers on the wall are worth two points at the end of the game so why not I do that twice? Here's a fish and a food. There are two workers for the wall. That could be it. I've got the discard card to gain an axe. I don't need any more axes. Spend the worker, I ain't got any more workers left. Spend two workers, spend resources to get axe. I don't care about axes anymore. So yeah, we're done. Game over. Let's just do this. For completeness, I can go away. Uh, and we are conquering over here, conquering twice. So I'm spending those axes, I'll get my boats back. And it doesn't matter except I want things. So I'm going to get these things. So that's a fish and a rock. And I'll also, this one gives me an extra boat, which is essentially useless, but I think whatever this is is just going to be two resources as well. That's just one resource, that was a mistake. Alright, essentially it doesn't make a difference because I've got an even number of things here now. So that's the end of the game. We're going to add up our bonus points at the end. So, if you recall, we're currently on 20, we're aiming for 45 for victory. If you recall, every card in your empire is worth a point, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I'm currently up to 34 points. Resources that you've got left over, every two of them is worth a point, so that's 1, 2 points. I'm up to 36 points, I need 9 points from the wall. Yes, victory is mine, so on the wall every rock is worth 3 points, every person is worth 2 points, that is 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 points. I'm up to, look at this, I get to turn this over, boop, plus 50, 51 points. I have claimed a victory. Victory is mine. We proceed. <laughs>